What is going on fellow Wastelanders? The new Speed Demon pack brought to us by Yoshida from the Neon Dragons and the Syndicate faction is available now featuring a brand new cabin that's received a hard landing, a new weapon that hit the market by storm, and early access to coveted Syndicate structural parts. Is the new cabin worth it and what the hell does a cabin perk actually mean? Today I'll be reviewing the items in the light edition of the pack, explaining how the cabin perk works and testing out a few builds in PvP using the Beacon 11 because right now the weapon is pretty expensive on the market and I'm still waiting for it to hit our partner account. So stay tuned for a more in-depth weapon test. Let's get right into this pack review. So starting off, there are a few early access parts you can get your hands on exclusively in this pack. And if you don't plan on purchasing the pack, don't worry, you will still be able to get these parts from the badge exchange. You just have to wait until the promotion ends. Now these parts are pretty awesome. First one is the Haro Syndicate part. In Japanese culture, a Haro was a type of cloak or garment attached to the back of the armor worn by samurai on the battlefields of feudal Japan. So naturally the part would feature a 30% bullet resistance, 15% fire resistance, and 30% energy resistance, and 15% frost resistance to reduce some of the damage of incoming fire now looking at the durability to weight it is also very nice with a whopping 206 points of durability for only 619 kilograms of mass now the mounting points on this park part are very interesting in terms of ways you can build with it i believe it is a 4x6x4 four by by four part so a pretty large chunk of armor you get from the hero syndicate part Next part in this pack is the Hanya, a mask used in Japanese Null Theater, representing a jealous female demon as pictured here in the front part of a racing car from a distant past. Could this be the bumper of an ex-lover to Yoshida? This part features 85% resistance to ramming damage, 70% resistance to melee damage, and a plus 25% bonus to ram damage, making it a great part for absorbing melee impacts. Durability of this part is 190 with only 320 kilograms and 6x2x4 by by dimensions. will make it a top contender among other bumpers in the wasteland. These parts are absolutely going to be great to have for future builds, so I'm very excited for them to become available on the badge exchange for all players. Now next up is the Raijin Cannon, which is the God of Thunder in Japanese mythology. And judging by the market prices, it has been causing quite the storm in the wasteland. It is a turret cannon that basically acts as a miniature kaiju, but better. It shoots a projectile that flies on a ballistic trajectory and explodes upon hit. Charging the shot increases the damage, impulse, and the speed of the projectile, and also reduces the spread. It has a charge up time, and although the reload is fast, it can still benefit from things like the Hadron Cabin, Discharge Module, and or the Flywheel. It features 65% penetration ability with 1440 durability, 22 points of energy, and 3038 kilograms of mass. It is low enough energy to use in combination with the Hadron and a few other weapons, but not low enough energy to fit more than one on your vehicle or Leviathan. Now the perk of this weapon is rather interesting and seems to be paired quite nicely with the cabin Catalina that also has a similar perk that increases damage. Now a direct hit on an enemy increases the damage and damage protection of the weapons by 7%. The effect stacks up to 3 times but fully disappears after a miss so basically it's J co-driver wrapped up in a weapon. My oh my I can see some skilled players out there being able to stack some serious damage with J per co-driver, Catalina cabin, and the Raijin combination. So overall this weapon seems really solid with good hitboxes and mounting points and durability. So we will have to keep our eye on the market and hopefully we have some movement from our fellow nomads to alleviate some of the market prices in the wasteland. So the last item we are going to be looking at today and showcasing more in depth as well as uh, showcasing two builds in PvP is the Beacon 11 Cabin, which has a really interesting perk I will try to explain the best I can to my knowledge, and a very unique cabin from Neon Dragon Driver Yoshida that despite often getting wrecked, only gets better. It is a cabin of epic rarity with some extraordinary mounting points 
using an 8x8x4 design. The two unique cutouts in the front and the back have had many engineers confused on how to build with it, but some very crafty engineers have been seen in the wasteland making use of this one-of-a-kind design in quite creative ways. It has a top speed of 80 kilometers an hour, making it pretty fast for a medium cabin and quite versatile on both styles of hovercraft, the Icarus 4s and the Icarus 7. It has 6,500 kilograms of tonnage and 12,500 kilograms of mass, so it seems to me to hold a lot of weight for its class. This perk is very interesting and has a lot of players scratching their heads, so I will try to explain a little bit about it and or at least my interpretation of it. So the perk reads as followed. An armored vehicle with this cabin takes 25% more damage. As you deal damage with any weapon, damage protection increases by 10% until the player's armored car is destroyed. Damage durability stacks up to 10 times, but is reduced for Leviathans. So let's start with the beginning part of this perk. An armored vehicle with this cabin takes 25% more damage. This is a base modifier that does not change and is passed on based on how much damage the enemy weapons do. For example, let's say a cannon shot or a machine gun shell is set to do a base damage of 100. With with the cabin damage modifier, the base damage is now increased to 125 before any of the parts resistances are taken into account. The next part of the perk deals with damage protection and states damage protections increases by 10% until the player's armored car is destroyed. It stacks up to 10 times, no more than once every 4 seconds. So let's use this hermit steering wheel as an example. It has a base durability of 310 points. If the cabin provides an additional 10% durability and say it has 4 charges, it would receive 40% damage protection equaling a total of 434 points of durability. This would now be the base damage or base durability before other factors like damage resistance of the wheels or other uh, resistance modifiers are taking into account. Like the added 25% of enemy weapon damage. So a cannon shot that would do 100 damage would do 125 damage because of the cabin perk. The wheels would resist 70% of this damage, bringing down the damage to 38. Then you would factor in the added durability of the cabin perk to 434, subtracting the damage of the cannon, bringing it down to 396 durability after the impact. Now I could be off here, so comment your thoughts below, but that is to my knowledge how it works. And for further for clarification, we can go to the cross out in-game guide and read here as follows. Damage resistance is a characteristic of a part. It reduces the current damage of a projectile that hits it and applies to a specific type of damage. The loss in total projectile damage doesn't depend on the durability of part with resistance. Damage protection is an acquired property of a part. For example, through an upgrade, a co-driver, or a unique feature of parts, aka cabin. One part can have several resistance values from different sources, when, which can stack up with each other. Damage protection reduces the damage a part receives regardless of its type and actually means how many more hits the part can withstand. The lost total projectile damage due to the protection depends on the durability of the part with protection. Therefore, damage protection primarily serves to improve the survivability of the part with this parameter, while the part with damage resistance can better protect parts located behind it, i.e. blast reduction will reduce the blast effect a cannon has to parts behind it. So all in all guys, I think the cabin is extremely underrated at the moment due to its convoluted perk and very unique design and mounting points that make it a bit harder to build with at first glance. So I'm just happy I was able to get a good deal on this cabin and the prices are still low at the moment to stock up on a few in case they become worth using or more valuable in the future. So without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, here are two builds we will be checking out today. The first build is the beacon cabin with pulsar cannons, claw wheels for damage, I probably should have went with Hermits to stack durability, the averter connected to the cabin, both quasars, both quasar weapons, and a bootstrap generator to increase their resistance by 30%. Now the second build is a Typhoon build on Icarus 7 hovers, 
Colossus engine for maximum power efficiency and the Amamori module for increased durability as well. Now, I think that is enough talking about Crossout. If you like this content, not only if you do, please like, subscribe, and turn on the bell to catch us live every Sunday and Wednesday on YouTube and Twitch. Special shout out to all our Wasteland supporters, making the growth of this channel possible by smashing that join button. The best 99 cents you will ever spend. Now let's check out some PVP with the brand new Beacon 11 cabin. All right, we're in Sector X with our Beacon Quasar build. I think we need to keep moving. We got the rotation speed. We gotta make sure we don't get hit too much in the beginning. We're already taking fire. That is kind of key with this build is to try and make sure we get our perk stacked up before we start taking obscene amounts of damage like that. That's not a good start to this. Ladies and gentlemen, increased fire damage until we get about three or four stacks of our perk, I'd say, and then we're kind of making out pretty good with this here cabin let's see if we can make another drive-by shot i love what they did with this map they made it a lot more open and just big with the helicopter i feel like incinerator uh cold damage like uh narwhals the high uh cryogenic damage actually probably uh affects this cabin pretty hefty, hefty. uh due to especially the cryogenic uh abilities ability to uh, get rid of the resistance modifiers. Now I wonder if that affects this here cabin. We put a bunch of uh, bumpers on the front of our build to make sure that we can ram our opponents to death. Worst case scenario. <clears throat> this build is holding up pretty good. No, we have six, six stacks of the perk here. We got to take out. Uh, oh, that's going to be a threat. Cyclone's going to absolutely shred us. Show them our good side. Show them our good side. We have quite a bit of stacks of this cabin here. Somehow we've managed to make it out alive. I love the way how uh, narrow this build ended up being. At first I thought builds with this cabin are naturally just going to be freaking massive. But it turns out you can actually make some pretty narrow builds with this cabin's kind of unique mounting point. So that's going to be pretty awesome. This build actually held up way better than I expected. I kind of want to use Grizzly Co-Driver with this cabin. I'm using J. So I might switch over to Grizzly Co-Driver and see how that goes with some added durability. So we've got the incinerator dude over here just kind of running and hiding behind his fire. We're just going to get him here. There we go, he's done. Pretty nice first match there with our uh, a Beacon Taco build. Sweet with an MVP, let's go. So we originally had J, which was great for projectile speed and such, but let's actually try to uh, increase our cabin's durability, our armored car's protection, all that good stuff, uh, and movement part durability. We're going to see how well it does now with added durability. Now, I, I, right, so we're on the Ravager's foothold with our Quasar Taco build. See if we can get some damage in for our perk. No missed shot. That's going to be a bad start to this one as enemy is looking at us and we are taking more damage without our durability. At least we have Grizzly at our side, right? Oh my god, I think the bot's dead. Oh, there's... Oh, uh, one charge to our perk. Oh no, this is a bad spot, ladies and gentlemen. I am being ranged from all corners of the map. Our team is spread out. Oh, not even the power of Grizzly can save me here, ladies and gentlemen. We have two charges to our perk, but I don't think that's going to be enough here. I think that's it for, uh, for us on this one. Troll 17 station, so we just gotta make sure we are doing drive-bys, not taking damage, hoping to charge the perk before we start receiving too much damage. Pretty tough. We're gonna be needing to fight for a good 30, 40 seconds at least, uh, or it could be very bad for us. So we gotta be very, very careful and not get too close to the enemy. <laughs> There's a melee guy. Oh, yes, yeah, so we're gonna use our ammo box as a lance. There we go. Fortunately, we also took off one of our wheels, maybe? No? Actually, we still have all our wheels. Beautiful. Oh, we might not anymore, though. Carjack OP. Oh, come on. I thought the damn crossbow event's over. Alright, incinerators are absolutely brutal. If you were using this cabin, I feel like so is cryogenic uh, weapons too. So you gotta watch out for those. Incinerators, maybe not after you have all your charges, but 
cryogenic weapons will obliterate this enemy. So not too bad with Grizzly, uh, although I think it's ultimately all about how careful you can be with this cabin, because I did get obliterated a few times if I, I took damage too early. Alright, this should be a good map for a Typhoon build. Um, now I just worry about how fast the, the perk might charge with this. See, I didn't even... Yeah, there is a charge, so I hit twice with a Typhoon to charge, it looks like. Can I get another charge off the second hit? Oh no, it looks like it was waiting to charge. Pull down. There's two charges of the perk. I gotta watch out of being hit from a distance here. Let's use cover. There's another bot over there. Let's see if we can actually get some charges off the, uh, the bots here. Hate to, hate to say it, but they're gonna give us some free charges here. Especially that tanky bot over there. There's four charges of our perk the Typhoons. Nope, not quite. I imagine using this with reload weapons could be very good, and uh, very durable weapons to stack up, you know, again, as much durability as possible, so I was definitely curious to see what this build would be like. Oh, big hit, oh my gosh. And six charges to the cabin. Oh, it's not a good day for uh, for that filler. This gentleman over here. Seven charges to the cabin here. We actually did really good on this map. This was, this map was kind of meant for us though. It's a long range map. <coughs> actually see if we can get some more charges off this gentleman <coughs> before we're taking damage. And there is the, the the player that we are so lucky that we avoided, because that would have ruined our day of stacking uh, the durability modifiers. I guess we're experiencing Yoshida's first round luck uh, every time here. That went much better than anticipated. And we are back on the East Quarter again, home of the Syndicate faction. Let's see if we can make them proud using the beacon build. Here we go, let's get some charges up. Oh my, do not take that Macedon shot, please. Oh, don't look at me, don't look at me. I'm dead, I'm dead. Oh. We need, we need, we need stacks on the perk before we start taking big shots. <clears throat> there we go. We're already up to five uh, stacks off of this here. Wow, which is pretty good, but we we're gonna take some damage again. And the bot's disarmed. Can we get one more charge? There we go. Before we have to face players that may, may know what they're doing. Oh, we got, we got the scorpion once. We tagged him. We tagged him, but can we bag him, ladies and gentlemen? We got him twice, we're up to eight charges. Our durability is up, but have we taken too much damage to make a difference? Oh, and we are in it like we are ready to win it here. Let's see if we can get the sneaky sneak. Like a sneaky sneak. All right. Oh, you spooked me. Last two, where 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 they be? Oh, there's a scorpion. Scorpion fell. Off. Let's see if we can capitalize with Mr. Burn here. Senior Bun. We have ten charges of our perk. Will it make the difference here? I actually really enjoy this hover build. I'm pretty excited. And it's uh, unfused typhoons, which I've always sworn that are terrible unless they're fused, but somehow this beautiful person on PC Exhibition made work. So that is wonderful. I'm actually pretty impressed by the cabin. 
I will say, guys. So if you like this content, definitely like and subscribe, guys. I will be live Sunday and Wednesday for some more crossout content as well as some variety streams of Path of Exile and Helldivers. So thank you very much. Twitch.tv slash shock radio, and I will see you guys in the next video.